Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, I was looking at all the news and everything. You know, apart from the Federal Reserve not mentioning about interest, um, uh, we don't have any real news from the genomic companies that we have in our watch list. It's very slow moving, and I was very disappointed looking at uh, Beam's anticipated uh, future milestones. There is literally not much for 2023 with Beam. Uh, the only other candidate I can think which would probably give us something uh, is going to be uh, Bluebird Bio because they can talk about SkySona and also give us information about more uh, patients enrolled beyond 27 for their uh, Zinteglo. Uh, so that's one aspect that I'm looking for. To the other is CRISPR therapeutics potentially coming up uh, with sickle cell disease approval probably around the middle of this year, uh, hopefully. Uh, and um, yeah, so those are uh, those are the main things that uh, I can see. Uh, hopefully, a little bit of progress from VCTX from CRISPR. Uh, I do not see much more in the horizon at this point of time. Um, of course, uh, there is one more candidate that is SQZ Biotech. Potentially, they may also come up with something potentially by the end of the year, um, and that would be for HPV. Uh, so the, this is what I am seeing overall uh, from the uh, number of companies that we have in our watch list. So with that said, uh, I think I thought today, um, since we are at the beginning of 2023, uh, I think it would be a good time to take stock of the state of play in the genomic industry from a technology perspective. Look at the various technologies and uh, where they are in terms of advancement and get some terminology nailed down so that we can communicate easily with, uh, with brevity as we analyze the genomic proceedings in 2023. So that's the topic of uh, today's video. However, before we proceed, I would like to remind you uh, that the painting is well in progress. As you can see uh, in the pictures that I took today, uh, this is the progress that I have made today with the painting. The horse shape is slowly emerging. Uh, I will have uh, other progress photographs tomorrow and uh, maybe a video uh, day after just to show how the painting process uh, goes on. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, this will motivate you to enter your name into the raffle. Uh, you could win this painting and get it shipped to you free of cost with no hidden costs. All you have to do is enter your name into the 2000 subscriber challenge raffle. We are almost 1800 subscribers today and very soon we'll touch 2000 mark and I will hold a live stream at that time to commemorate 2000 and we'll draw the lucky winner in the live stream. So check the description and click on the link to enter your name in the raffle. That said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Uh, right from the prehistoric time, uh, mankind has been trying to find uh, uh, remedies for various uh, ailments. Uh, in the earlier days, it was herbs and, um, uh, you know, grinding up a couple of herbs together uh, and uh, feeding somebody with that. And then we had uh, homeopathic medicine, we have allopathic medicine, we have Ayurvedic medicine. And we have Chinese medicine, we have native medicine, there are various types of medicines. Uh, they all have the aim of curing diseases and uh, giving relief to the patient. And since then we have come a long way. We, we were treating a lot of uh, symptoms earlier uh, in medicine by using small molecules that could uh, provide relief to the body. And uh, since then we have come a long way and now the innovation is moving with leaps and bounds. Genomics is a broad term that I use to describe the companies in our watch list that are in the cutting edge of medicine. Uh, this includes companies that uh, use a variety of technologies to achieve the same or similar goals. Take the case of SQZ Biotech. Uh, they do not uh, use CRISPR. They literally squeeze suspensions into the cells to create the therapies. Then we have the monoclonal antibodies and mRNA, not to mention what we have started with as CRISPR-Cas9 that has morphed into multiple Cas as well as base and prime editing. Then there is sequencing and pattern matching as well as discovery. So it's a very, very wide uh, spectrum of activity that goes on into the genomics field. First things first, I consider that anything to do with uh, genes uh, as genomics. Uh, genes are basically proteins and we have a new field of proteomics about which we will talk about uh, in a separate video. Now let's look, e look at each of the technologies and has, as they have evolved. The first one is CRISPR-Cas9 with which we started the entire channel. Uh, our focus was on CRISPR-Cas9. And uh, we know that CRISPR-Cas9 combo can make double strand cuts on the DNA at a specified spot 
it consists of two key molecules that can change the DNA. The enzyme molecule is the Cas9 that acts as a molecular scissors uh, and cuts the DNA strands at the specific location in the genome so that bits of DNA can be deleted or added to that spot. The second molecule is called the guide RNA, also called as gRNA, to anchor the DNA and position the Cas at the right spot uh, to edit the DNA. Once the cutting and editing is performed, the cell automatically recognizes that double strand break has happened and repairs itself uh, with, uh, with the changes intact in most of the cases. The next one is based on the deficiency we identified with CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR-Cas9 has limitation and it's a large molecule and therefore more Cas molecules have been identified and used successfully. This can be seen in the Wiki uh, Wikipedia page here. As you can see, this is a long page. There are so many Cas proteins and most of these Cas proteins are smaller than Cas9 and they have specific performance. They are, it's, it's becoming more and more like specific tool for a specific task. Uh, I'm not technically qualified to go through all of these, but suffice to say that at a high level from an investor perspective, what we need to understand is that CRISPR-Cas9 was the beginning. Since then, the tool has been refined and fine-tuned uh, for various uh, specific applications. And if you're interested, you can go into the Wikipedia page and have a look. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so that you can uh, check it out. I think it would suffice to say that we have come a long way from when CRISPR-Cas9 was the only game in town. We then have uh, base editing in which a uh, uh, CRISPR combination is used in a manner that it identifies the right location in the DNA where a single strand cut is made. Uh, and then the Cas protein changes the base at that location and moves away. And the cell uh, intuitively recognizes that there has been a damage to the DNA. It goes and repairs the single strand break, uh, retaining the edit that has been made. And therefore, the DNA is edited without a double strand break. So this is an elegant way in which uh, base editing performs. And base editing is limited to how many edits it can do with uh, in one round. Uh, but that can be sorted by having multiple rounds of base edits, I suppose. Then we come to the third, uh, sorry, to the fourth uh, variation, which is called prime editing. Uh, again, prime editing achieves uh, a larger edit uh, with a single uh, strand cut. Uh, and uh, this is done uh, using a CRISPR and reverse transcriptase combination uh, in which an RNA template is uh, uh, used to copy new sequences into the DNA. This allows replacing stretches of DNA. Uh, this method is speculated to be the most advanced and potentially the future of gene editing. Uh, uh, there is a separate company that was floated uh, called um, uh, Prime Medicine, and uh, that uh, predominantly uses uh, Prime Editing. And uh, we are looking forward to great things coming from that company. But these are very early days, and this is a complex technology. So we'll have to wait and see what they come up with. Next, we have a very, very elegant and simplistic solution from a company called SQZ Biotech. Uh, they have a trademarked uh, patented procedure. It's called a cell squeeze technology. And uh, it's a simplistic approach where uh, suspensions are pushed into the cell by squeezing the cell and, uh, and the suspensions through a very narrow passage. This results in specialized cells uh, that can perform therapeutic tasks because the suspensions are now incorporated into the cells. I'll be making a separate video on their uh, uh, most advanced therapy called SQZ PBMC HPV for patients with HPV 16 plus because it's in collaboration with Roche and it's currently fast tracked by FDA and it's in phase one of two clinical studies looking for sa safety uh, factors. So I'll make a video for that probably this week or next week. Uh, but uh, I would like to show you their website where I'm, I want to talk to you about that technology just to give you an overall view. It explains much better. So here we are in the website of SQZ Biotech. Uh, SQZ APCs, um, their uh, therapy for uh, HNN, cervical uh, and an anal cancer and other solid tumors is in the fast track with Roche. So now if I was to uh, get into this, it takes me to the uh, page uh, at, uh, uh, at the FDA where we can see the details of, uh, of this particular therapy. But coming back uh, to uh, SQZ, SQZ uh, Biotech, let us look at uh, SQZ APCs. Uh, so this is how they describe it. Patient's immune cell are collected. And along with that, uh, they have something called as MH1C molecule uh, with an antigen 
uh, that uh, that is specific to the tumor that it's trying to target and then the MH1C with the antigen is squeezed along with the uh, immune cell of the patient through a very very narrow passage uh, during which the uh, suspensions of MH1C with the antigens are incorporated into the immune cell and then once the immune cell is delivered into the uh, body uh, what happens is that uh, the immune cell presents uh, the antigen to the CD8 T cells and activates the CD8 T cells and then the C uh, T uh, CD8 T cells uh, multiply and uh, search out throughout the body for the antigen on the tumor and go and destroy the tumor and uh, and eliminate the cancer. So this is how uh, SQZ Biotech works. And uh, if you look at that cell squeeze technology, I think I've shown this to you before. So this is a very clear uh, illustration of uh, how the system works. So you see this suspension coming in, going through a narrow uh, passage and uh, it gets incorporated. So it's as simple as that. So that's what we have here uh, when it comes to cell squeeze technology. The next portion of genomics is uh, mRNA. Though mRNA does not edit the DNA, it uses genomics to create proteins within the human body to do a particular task. In case of vaccines, the mRNA can carry the recipe to generate the spike protein and uh, prime the body's defenses against a particular virus that carries that spike protein. In other cases, it can create a protein that is deficient in the body and thus resolve some health issues. For example, if someone is deficient of a particular protein that helps for uh, blood to clot uh, and uh, therefore they are not able to uh, stop bleeding, then you can have a mRNA solution for that by uh, delivering the specific protein to the area uh, to uh, enable uh, clotting of the blood and stop the bleeding. So uh, those are the uses of mRNA. Even though it doesn't change the DNA, uh, it doesn't edit the DNA, but still it's using genomic science uh, in order to deliver a solution. And next we have monoclonal antibodies. Antibodies bind to spike proteins and neutralize virus. Monoclonal antibodies can be manufactured in the lab, and these are modeled on natural antibodies present in our immune system, but they are synthetically manufactured. And once they are introduced into the body, they do the task that the natural antibody would have done and help to fight against a virus. In case of COVID, we had a lot of monoclonal antibody vaccines that were created that helped people who could not create the antibody by themselves in their bodies. They were given the synthetic monoclonal antibody uh, in order to uh, latch onto the spike protein of COVID and uh, neutralize it. So even though we do not do any genetic editing out here, but it's still within the genomic realm. Next, we have PCR tests. We have seen a lot of PCR tests for uh, uh, COVID. Uh, this is a diagnostic test that employs genomics to detect the presence of the genetic material of a given virus. That's why I would include this also into genomics. Then we enter an area where we have automation and systems created to help this entire genomic sector. The first one is uh, uh, genomic sequencing companies that make equipments that supply to sequence uh, DNA from all organisms. They also offer the software to analyze and, uh, the sequence DNA. We have Illumina and PACB in this area. And then we have companies that come up with manufacturing systems and substances that enable bulk, bulk manufacturers of genomic medicine. This includes uh, uh, transportation uh, vehicles uh, like uh, LNPs and uh, AAVs or adeno-associated viruses and lentiviruses, uh, as well as uh, uh, plants in which uh, uh, gene therapies can be manufactured in, uh, to scale. Thermo Fisher is a company that comes to mind. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the other companies that we have to look, on, look at when we look at the uh, genomic sector as a whole. Unfortunately, even though we have a lot of uh, genomic companies in our watch list, uh, so far uh, in the last three days of uh, my uh, research, I have not found any company that has any major milestone coming up in uh, 2023, apart from CRISPR Therapeutics and SQZ Biotech. Overall, uh, more progress has been made in creating CAR T cell therapy to date to cure various types of cancer. Many have been monetized and they are already in the uh, field. Uh, we have a sickle cell disease cure from uh, Bluebird uh, and uh, we are going to have a CALD cure also coming from Bluebird and potentially a few more sickle cell disease cure coming from the likes of CRISPR therapeutics. And uh, there are many more therapies that are on the pipeline with various companies, uh, but uh, none of them are in a stage where I can confidently say that we are going to have uh, something coming out for monetization this year. I'm going to be doing uh, more studies on these, uh, on uh, various companies that we have in our watch list. I've just finished Beam and CRISPR therapeutics and SQZ Biotech. I have a few more to go through. And then I'll have a separate video on that.
So as we are, as we are uh, looking at uh, uh, these companies, we also have uh, private sector companies as well as universities that are working on cures for hard to treat diseases like Alzheimer's and HIV and uh, hemophilia B. So there is a whole lot of work going on in genomic sector. Uh, the major challenges have been the FDA approval for which FDA has increased its team size and budget. Uh, then we have the off-base edits for which we have base editing. Then there was the realization that certain areas of the DNA are out of bounds for edits as they may lead to cancer. And therefore, we have a better idea of edit targets so that we can avoid cancer-causing edits. And finally, we have the problem of high costs of these therapies. And work is ongoing in this area, and we should see more innovative government policies and also product pricing strategies from companies. Uh, I'm going through the pipeline of various genomic companies in our watch list to come up with potential FDA events for the therapies uh, in their pipeline for 2023 so that we can have a table that shows us what to expect each month of the year, if not month of the year, at least quarter of the year, if not quarter of the year, at least first half and second half of the year. But unfortunately, that kind of information seems to be very, very difficult to obtain. This is the third day of my uh, looking through all these uh, genomic company websites. I'll share my results uh, next week with you when I finish my uh, total study and I'm absolutely confident that I've missed out, uh, I have not missed out anything. I'll bring that to you. Uh, and uh, we'll see what is there for us uh, this year. And if uh, uh, the current watch list of companies do not have any major milestone coming in, then I would uh, look at uh, incorporating those uh, genomic companies in all the areas that we discussed, which are going to have FDA milestone. And let us look at them uh, for uh, our uh, investment options and look at them more actively as compared to the uh, watch list that we have right now. We can remove some of the companies from our current watch list which are not as promising. So with that said, uh, I just have one more remark to make before I go. Uh, the market is looking good today because uh, Fed Powell did not talk about interest rates. So the market thinks that the next interest rate hike is going to be 25 basis points. But I would like to see the consumer price index come out. I'd like to see the employment data come out like to see a sustained uh, reduction in inflation i can't believe what the fda is uh, sorry what the F, uh, fed is going to do uh, fed will increase the interest rates if there is even a slightest hint of uh, increase in inflation or if the inflation stays steady that's my personal opinion so whatever uh, uh, jump we have seen in this market will come down uh, eventually when that realization arises and we are going to uh, have to keep in mind that even though it's slightly distant uh, the debt ceiling is going to come in and that's definitely going to push us down. So be very, very careful when you're investing. That's, why, that's what my advice would be. Uh, don't put money that you can't afford to lose. Uh, don't catch a falling knife. Uh, those are the things that I would say. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.